I woke up this morning and there was snow on the ground. I couldn't believe it. It's only October. But then I remembered scotch. And I couldn't wait till the evening happened and I could finally think of scotch season. Today, I'm reviewing Lefroy Quarter Cask. So, uh, as you can tell from my intro, that uh, I tend to move a little bit in my tastes with the seasons. I, I tend to like scotches, especially peated scotches, when it's really cold. It's not really cold today. The snow's melted off, and I think it's going to be a nice couple of days here. But it woke up, and it was miserable. That snowy, rainy, sleety, dark thing, and right away, as you might think of warming up by a fire, I often think of warming up by a scotch. Today I want to look at Laphroaig Quarter Cask. Uh, Laphroaig is a distillery on uh, Islay, and they are um, a, a great representation, or almost a traditional representation, of an Islay scotch. That means that you are going to find that this is a peated scotch. If you're brand new to scotch, not my first recommendation, but as we get into it, you're gonna see that I really quite like this. I'm gonna give it a pour. Uh, Lefroy Quarter Cask is not a, there's not an age statement on it. Uh, my research says it's probably somewhere around an eight year expression, which is actually quite young for a scotch. Scotch, uh, to be a scotch, it has to be made uh, entirely out of barley uh, and uh, barley is a grain that does take time to open up in wood. And so, um, un unlike uh, aging in a warmer climate, like if we were talking about a bourbon that's put in new oak in the south, that can age very quickly, most scotches really come to life, I would suggest, around the 10 or 12 mark and really improve from there. However, Lefroy Quarter Cask takes a little bit different approach. They um, finish, I need to look up in their research how long they finish it, but they finish this expression in a cask that is one quarter the size of a regular cask. And what that creates is a significantly more surface area for the whiskey to interact with the wood, which gets you some of those wood notes early on. Uh, you can see this is quite a bit different from the last whiskey that I poured, last podcast I talked about Canada, no it's not Canada, it's JP Weiser 150. They put it out for Canada's 150th anniversary um, and that was a great balanced approachable whiskey. Uh, um, you could pick up some of the wood notes, you were definitely getting some of the caramel taste, uh, you get a little bit of rye spice, that was a nice whiskey. Uh, easy to recommend to anyone trying out whiskey. This one is absolutely one of my favorites. Uh, this scotch, uh, I'm, I'm just going to give it a nose. Uh, and that's what I was thinking about this morning. Just as I decided I'd shoot in front of a fire, to me, the approach on this is nothing but lovely warmth. It's like a, it's like a big hug you might get from a campfire. There's uh, a little bit of, I actually want to say that I, I find peat coming up first, even before smoke. How does peat get into whiskey? Well, traditionally, when you malt a grain, just to open it up so the sugars can, uh, the yeast can get at the sugars, you know, make the alcohol we're looking for and release other flavors. Uh, grains, like to, to get the complex carbohydrates, you've got to let them germinate a little bit, right? So that's the part where you, we call it malting. You open up the grain, but then you have to stop it, right? So there's still all that sugar, it doesn't get ruined. So you stop it with heat. And traditionally, uh, the Scots and, uh, and other people, but the Scots here we're thinking of would have used peat as their fuel source. And that heating of the, the malt, the malted barley, it's not a liquid, it's just that new grain malted barley, um, 
you stop the germination with peat smoke, well with heat, and then that would give this flavor that stayed through the whole process. And you get it right away on the nose. If you stay with it though, you'll get a pleasant sweetness. You'll get, in this one, a little bit of wood. Now, Lefroy quarter cask is 48%, so it's a bit stronger. If you're not used to that, it might even singe your nose a little bit. But, um, but again, really good. Gonna give it a, a taste. Been thinking about it all day. <laughs> And just as the nose presents, oh, this is a peated scotch, so does the flavor profile. You let it roll over your tongue, that 48% alcohol is going to bring up the flavor. You're going to get a, almost a tongue burn that you get in rye. But as you let it kind of be in your mouth, or, or maybe it's coming back on the finish a little bit, then I'm getting some of the wood, which I think is great for this age expression in scotch. I think the, the deciding to finish it in the smaller casks really benefits this whiskey. Uh, I have to say this is one of my favorites. The, the coloring is light, you can tell it's young, um, and it's still a little bit rough. You know, it's still a little rough. You, the, the alcohol's there on the nose, it's there in the taste. Um, and some could argue maybe the peat isn't as smoothed out as, as it could be with a little more time in oak. But this is a delicious whiskey. If you like peated scotch and you haven't tried it, I can't think of why. You usually can get it for a decent price. Uh, if you don't like peated scotch though, this may not be my recommendation. This is easily a four, four and a half star whiskey. Well, I shouldn't say easily. For me, it is a go-to. Let's call it a four star whiskey. Um, but it's got more flavor than that almost. I, I look for this on my shelf regularly. If I run out of this bottle in winter, which I might, um, it will be something that I look for on sale or promotion because it's great to have around. However, if I'm gonna have a friend over and say, oh hey, try this whiskey or this scotch, it's got some peat, I probably wouldn't go for Lefroy. If you measure the amount of peat in here, in parts per million. I think they're looking at the phenols in it. That's the compound that's gonna tell you, oh yeah, there's a smoke going on. There's maybe even a, a medicine-y, gasoline type stuff. Um, you know, I think Lefroy tests around 45, 40 to 45 parts per million. Um, half of that, around 20, 25, is Highland Park. That might be my recommendation if you're just trying a peated scotch. It's, it's less kind of really, uh, something you're going to chew on. Um, to give you an idea, regular scotch that's going to get some of that from the char of the oak barrel. They're between, they're around five or less parts per million. So 45 really is quite a bit. Nothing like an Octomore that's somewhere around 80 or I think they have an 120 now or something. I can't even go there. Um, but this is a great peated scotch. So my review would say uh, this is a great Easily a four star, but certainly one that I would seek after and try. It's a great expression from Lefroy, one that I enjoy and purchase when I can. Next part of the podcast, I've tried to, to title either local events or local activities. I don't have my guide with me today, so I'm actually not going to touch on local events or activities. I thought I might give a shout out to some of the liquor stores around the Edmonton area that, that I think are worth checking, worth, worth visiting. They often have a good selection or, or great people or both. Um, if I think about Edmonton, uh, I right away think of Chateau Louis on Kingsway. It's on the North Edmonton. You might come in, you might think, oh, it's kind of a small store. Or I don't know what's going on, but spend a little bit more time. And I think you'll be very impressed with their selection of scotch and other whiskeys, and also their willingness to, to really get into a good conversation um, offer a taste if you're thinking about one expression or another. I found them to be a great place to go. I like uh, Wine and Beyond in the Windermere location, mostly for selection. They're also quite good at trying to be helpful or offering a taste, but they're a big chain and it's tougher for me to really love big chains, uh, but I do appreciate that they bring in a good selection. And also they often host a number of tastings and that's a really nice community thing to do. I appreciate that. Keg and Cork I've been to a few times. They also host quite a few tastings. 
Um, but they're a little far from me, so I don't go there as often. I'd like to go a little more often to them. They seem to really be connected to the whiskey and scotch uh, community. So that would be a good place to go. I know they have a tasting for Springbank on Halloween. So that's kind of a, an interesting idea. Sherbrooke Looker, Liquor, Sherbrooke Liquor uh, on, um, boy, 118 St. Albert Trail. I've often gone to them for craft beer more than anything else. I, I haven't really gone to them for whiskey or scotch, uh, but they do have quite a large local craft beer market. If you come all the way to St. Albert, uh, Campbell Liquor is a nice place to be. They will often offer a tasting or host a tasting Friday night or Saturday, I think one to five. Uh, and they also try to promote a lot of local distilleries. Now that is something I'm really interested in. I'd love to know more local distilleries. I'd like to know who they are, what they're doing. And uh, once this podcast or uh, video review gets going, I think I'd love to host them on the show and ask more about their journey or experience. So I can't think of any other things I wanted to highlight today. I just know that as soon as the winter fell and I wanted to work through the different types of whiskey early on in my podcast as well to help you, the listener, understand my taste profile. Um, today, this whiskey, this uh, scotch, great example of Islay whiskey. I'm giving it four stars, a favorite of mine. Uh, but if you don't like peat or you haven't tried peat, it's not actually a recommendation. I would hold off and try something a bit mellower because this is radically different from the JP Weiser 150 that we tried just the other podcast. That was approachable by anybody who likes whiskey. Um, they might like it more or less, but anybody could have a sip of that. This, you know, uh, my brother-in-law tried a sip of this and um, reminded me that unless he was dying and this could bring him back from the brink of death, that I should never pour that for him again. Also, I had a friend over, I was walking through the different regions of Scotch, of Scotland, sorry, and the Scotch they tend to produce, at least traditionally. We ended with this. He also enjoyed the experience, asked me never to pour it again for him. So I can't say, hey, grab a bottle, drink it, you'll love it. Uh, but if at all you like um, strong rye or you've tried peat, maybe a little bit of peat and you want to try something more, this is a great uh, peated scotch. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Uh, if you like what you saw or heard, uh, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like uh, and share with friends. Thanks for joining me here on The Whiskey Neighbor. Have a great night.